What's this guy's name? No. Never heard of him. It's time to learn stuff while punching crime in the face. This is Arkham Wednesdays. Today we're talking about the Arkham Knight Season Pass. And before I tell you what we can expect from Season Pass, I need to totally add an echo effect there so I sound all He-Man-like. I have some slight issues with the Season Pass, mainly the price. Doing the DLC thing doesn't really bother me anymore. It did way back when it first started. But this world and that world is a very different world from how gaming is now. All you need to know is we can't go back to the here and then. But a boycott of a Batman game? Nah, I'm not doing that. Yes, I'm biased. I'm a Batman fan and a crazed one at that. So what, what do you expect? This channel and those games pay my rent and I'm thankful for that. Does that mean I won't be critical of it? Heck no! I started YouTube as a critic and I'll remain a critic until my last breath. Wow, that sounded way too morbid. Maybe I'll take that out in post. Truthfully, Season Pass offers really no deal over just buying the premium game. Without going premium and just doing Season Pass, you're gonna end up paying a lot more in total. But I think Season Pass would be all right if it was around 24 bucks. That's a much more attractive and affordable price for most people. 40 bucks, not so much. So what do you get for buying the legendary $100 game instead of, you know, the regular $60 retail version? At the moment, only one difference. If you pre-order this game right now on the PSN or the PlayStation 4 until June 22nd, you will save a little bit of cash. I think it's like 11 bucks because it's only $89.99 to pre-order the full game with season pass included. This is the only deal that I've come across so far. So, you know, if you wait, then you're gonna end up paying 99 bucks. Still, for some, that's gonna be pretty steep even then. So, you know, it's up to you guys whether or not you wanna do it. But I'm really annoyed that many publications are not talking about this deal on the PlayStation. They're saying, this is $100 for, you know, a Batman game. I'm not paying this, meh, meh. But there's, there's actually a deal, so I mean, it would be a journalist's job to tell people about it. So again, it's going on right now. Actually, I think it started on the 23rd of April, and it's going until June 22nd. So right before the game comes out. Or it might even go till the 23rd until the game comes out. I, I'm not sure. So just hit up your PlayStation and you can see for yourself. And I'm not going to tell you to buy it or not. You decide that. I'm not going to tell you to do it. That's not my job. I provide you with the information. You do whatever you want with it, all right? But I'm going to get all the DLC in Harley, Red Hoods, the skins, legendary Batmobiles, challenge maps, scarecrow missions, and racetracks. Why? Because I have a serious problem. But then I'm going to play them and post them on this channel so you can mock my gameplay. And that wasn't a joke. Just watch my Arkham City walkthrough. Wow, I've come so far. Now, if you don't pre-order this off the, uh, you know, PlayStation 4 right now, I do think the premium and season pass is not really a good deal. I don't see that being a benefit to anybody. It's not like a Mario Kart 8 Nintendo season pass. That thing rocked. It's cheaper than paying for things separate, and sometimes you got free characters and other stuff. That's doing DLC right. I think WB would really benefit by taking a page from Nintendo's book and not so much EA Games and some of those other guys. So far, what I've heard about the DLC, the Season Pass is extra content and doesn't affect the outcome of the overall game. It's not like an Adam West cliffhanger where you're gonna have to pay money to see how it ends. There's gonna be a clear, definitive ending for whatever happens in Arkham Knight. Like maybe where Dick Grayson becomes the Batman could happen. Don't take this possibility from me, guys and gals. Not after what happens to Dick and Batman vs. Superman, according to those stupid rumors. This season pass is great for crazy fans like me, I'm not gonna lie, who want to continue to support the developer and get something extra for doing something. I like incentives for saying, hey, I like your crap. It's like a Kickstarter that you know is going to be successful because let me tell you, it sucks paying for stuff that crashes and burns in front of your eyes and you wonder if you got a refund. Though the Mighty Number no. 9 uh, campaign was a success and I think I actually got a t-shirt or something for my contribution. I'm gonna be the voice of uh, reason for all you guys, okay? Because I don't know what the comments are gonna be like. I don't even want to think about it. If you don't like the season pass, you don't have to buy it. I'm providing you information. Take it how you want. 
Or, if you're patient, like with Arkham City, you can wait a year or two for a full release later that's going to have all the content in the game. But then again, it all depends on the sales and how the game is perceived. Arkham Origins did not get a full release of all the DLC because the sales were abysmal. So remember that if you decide on saying, I'm done with microtransactions, I'm not doing this. You can't have your cake and eat it too, guys and gals. Great, now I want cake. Still, I can understand, 40 bucks for DLC is rough. And as a seasoned critic, I feel the need to grab a pitchfork and lead a torch-wielding mob to victory. And I was totally ready to lead the charge until I saw that pre-order thing on my PlayStation 4. What really upsets me is I had such a great argument against this. But now, eh, it doesn't really matter. And to be honest, I don't know if this deal of $89.99 is because I'm a PlayStation Plus member or not, to be frank. But I will be the first to say that not all DLC is always worth it. Case in point, Arkham Origins. Lots of that was not worth my hard-earned cash. The story stuff minus freeze was pretty weak. Costumes, there was a lot of them, but eh, some didn't even work, like Batman 1 million. I've tried so much to get that skin to work, and the stupid WBID doesn't. So, to some extent, I understand your pain, but a boycott? I'm not doing that. Still, again, if you want to listen to me as your little Jiminy Cricket with an amazing voice, then that's up to you. But Rocksteady is definitely doing this DLC for the diehard, insane fans only. Not the casuals that want to pick up a simple 60 buck copy of the game. And I actually remember when new games used to cost 70 to 80 bucks back when I was a kid. Carts were expensive until the mid-90s when you had that whole Nintendo Player's Choice thing and then PlayStation would compete and it was good for gamers and, you know, people's wallets, but you kids have it way too good. I will tell you that right now. In short, I totally support the whole DLC thing and I already paid for it, so I put my money where my mouth was and I literally took care of it digitally, like, just a few minutes ago. The reason why I did it is to show my support for the developer. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the final Rocksteady Arkham game. And I want the ride to last as long as possible. I don't want everything to be released the first few weeks on disc DLC. You know, that just, that doesn't work anymore. I don't want the company sales to suffer from lazy, impatient people hacking and spoiling the entire game for me before I even get to that point. So, yeah, there's, there's other reasons why, you know, I'm in favor of this, but whatever. By paying that price, uh, guys and gals, I said thanks for making the game rock steady. And if it sucks, in theory, well, you know me. I won't shut up about it, ever. I will become Arkham's Reckoning. I didn't pull my punches with AO or any game that didn't live up to my expectations in any of the years that I've been a journalist. I don't sugarcoat stuff, because I'm a critic, so I'm critical. I do my job, okay? Uh, that's what I do. I will say this, and, uh, just so everybody's clear. All the Arkham Knight news that you see on this channel is not a sponsored series. Sure, I'm trying to get in nice with Rocksteady, but I'll never compromise who I am or what I do to get stuff. That's not how I roll. And that's all I have to say on that matter. So feel free to open the floodgates of discussion. Just be civilized about it. You wingdings are a higher class of YouTube viewers, and you should be proud of that. Now then. What do we know about the season pass? To be honest, not much. PlayStation fans get exclusive stuff like Justice League 3000, Adam West skin, Flashpoint, and Scarecrow stuff. Plus things that are going to be revealed at E3 that I just can't wait to learn about. Along with some exclusive PlayStation skins. I don't know, when I bought the thing it said, Hey, there's exclusive PlayStation skins. It's like, okay, whatever. The Red Hood and Harley and other retail exclusives aren't part of the DLC though and the season pass, so you need to know that. Otherwise, the retail dudes can't make their money. So it's kind of, you know, useless until a Game of the Year edition, if it's ever released later. And I have no idea what the whole racing Batmobile tracks are, but all I can think about is Sunday Drive Batmobile Edition. So that gets me pretty hyped. The legendary Batmobile skins sound pretty cool, but if it's just another paint job like the 60s Batman skins, then, you know, that's kind of lame. I really want to see the Batman animated series mobile, the Injustice car, Keaton's ride, and the Tumblr. That would be so sick. Or, of course, the new Batman vs. Superman, like, Batmobile thing. The walk-on villains thing sounds interesting, but I need more info. 
Are they talking about Hush, perhaps? Or maybe Bane? Or something else that we've seen in the prequel comic? Extra story missions? I'm game, but I don't really understand how that's going to work. As long as it's in the same vein as a Mr. Freeze DLC and not Harley Quinn's Revenge, then I'm good. My theory video about how that DLC was going to go before it came out was a better storyline than what we received. So I will be really let down if they go back the Quinn's Revenge route and not actually a fleshed out uh, story like the Mr. Freeze stuff. As for other stuff, well, I won't waste your time with speculation because we don't know anything else. Rocksteady hasn't released anything else, so we're done. I hope you all have a great night. Uh, tune in for some Convergence talk later this week. I'm off to read so many comics and sip some Coco Moo. So have a fantastic night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks again for watching Arkham Wednesdays, and I'll see you sometime this week on the Nightwing on One channel. Have a great night. Thank <laughs> you.